I believe that most human beings are only living at about 40% of their capability. The mind has a governor, like a car. If you're driving a car and the car has a governor on it, the car may say 130 miles an hour, but the governor is set for 91. Once that governor sets in, you get to 91, that car starts doing this. The car wants to go. The car wants to go, but that fucking factory said, uh-uh, we're not going past 91. We have a factory, a nice governor in our brain, and it's a survival mechanism. It protects us from pain and suffering. The second we feel that shit, our mind says, oh no, this isn't fun. We should back off. We should sit down, find something more comfortable. And there's something about the mind. The mind has the tactical advantage over you at all times. At all times of your life, the mind has a tactical advantage over you. Why is that? It knows what you're afraid of. It knows your insecurities. It knows your deep, dark lies. And it starts to push you away from that shit. It pushes you in a direction that is comfortable. The mind controls everything. So what I realized was that when I was growing up and I was 300 pounds and I got all fat and I got all insecure, I realized that my mind kept taking me in this direction. When things got uncomfortable for me, when I was facing my insecurities, when I was facing my fears, my mind said, oh no, we have a tactical advantage. We need to get you, separate you from this feeling. This feeling over here, life's all about feelings. We want the happy feeling. We don't want that feeling of this sucks. Why am I here? And you don't have any, so, so you can't answer those questions, so you leave. I started realizing that if in that moment you can answer those up questions and you are now in charge of your brain versus your brain ruling you, that's where all that stuff comes from. So, so, so the 40% rule is all of that. You get to 40%, your brain says, we're done. Let's roll, man. This is starting to get painful. This is uncomfortable. So you sit down. You have to figure out ways, and everybody's different. That's how the book kind of talks about, like we all have these things about, you know, five steps to this and, and four steps to this. It's, it's a lot more than that. That's all bullshit. It's, it's a practice that you have to, it's a habit. So if you know that at 40%, I'm still, you know, I'm feeling pain. At 40%, I'm feeling pain. That's where the 40% rule kicks in. Now it starts, okay, I'm, I'm feeling pain. My mind's saying all this shit to me. It's saying, get out of here, run, flee. The fight or flight kicks in. Okay, we're done, we're not good enough. It starts telling you all these things. You start to believe it, because the mind controls all. This is the time where you have to gain control back of your mind. It's okay, let me see if I can go 45%. And once you start giving yourself more and more hope, and start realizing, okay, the mind starts to be, okay, what, what are you doing? We're supposed to be going right and you're going left. You start then controlling your mind. Start finding more in, you know, in yourself. And then it goes from 40% to a lot further than that. But that's the start of it though. Get to, get to the spot where your mind is saying stop. Wherever that is, you gotta get there first. And then that's when that shit starts to work for you. You gotta control yourself in that moment. So a lot of people can live with themselves. That's the first thing. A lot of people can live with themselves, look in the mirror and say, I'm okay with being afraid. I'm okay with going on this easy highway over here. The easy highway has all these fucking signs and shit, directions how to get somewhere. And you have to first be uncomfortable with how you feel about yourself. With that voice that a lot of us like to run away from, we all have it. We all have that voice that's saying, hey man, you know, you're, you're kind of wimping out right now. You're kind of being a little punk right now. But a lot of us say, okay, that's okay. It's okay to tell these little white lies to ourselves. So we first have to face the real you. The real me is David Goggins. The real me is the guy looking at you right now saying, I don't want to be on this show right now because I used to stutter as a kid. And I'm afraid of that. I'm afraid that here in a second, I'm going to start stammering and stuttering. And the whole world is going to know that I have all these issues. But that's when I see right now, okay, Goggins, you got to go on this show. That's Goggins. Goggins is saying, okay, David Goggins, you're a punk. Life made you this way. We can't live like this. We can't live in fear. We can't live in judgment. We can't be afraid of what the f people right now are looking at me saying about me. We cannot be afraid of that. That's Goggins. Goggins saying, f all of you who don't like me, who don't want to, and that person then comes in. But you have to be David Goggins and say, man, I'm afraid of this. I'm fucked up here. Life made me this way here. 
I stutter, I, I have these issues with, with, with uh, reading and writing and, and I'm, I'm, I'm fat and I'm insecure. You have to face that in that dark room. In that dark room is who you are. But in that dark room is where you have to create another human being that walks out of that dark room to face who you are. That's the only way you're gonna get over all those things. And people don't wanna do that. They wanna say, oh, don't call yourself fat. Don't call yourself dumb. If you're not real and raw with who the f you are, nothing's gonna change. And in this nice new world that we live in, we wanna hear, you're just a little big. No, man, you might be fat. And it's okay to hear that from yourself and from everybody else. So that's where it started at. And it's raw. It, it gets ugly sometimes with me in that mirror. But I'm also proud of myself to be able to tell myself that and then fix what's in that mirror. So the first thing about it is once you realize it, and you have to realize it, you got to call yourself out. Addressing it is very small. It's, it, like, it doesn't go from like one morning, I'm um, this way, next morning I wake up and presto, the, you know, five steps to greatness. No, <laughs> it ain't that, brother. You read my book, this is hard work. It's every day, like, like right now. I had to be honest with you, man. I'm even shaking right now being on this show. I'm a big time introvert. How you address it is you face it. You face it every day. You face it every single day of your life where you say, okay, like if you're fat, you need to lose weight. It's patience. It's patience in this fact of accepting who you are right now. I'm fat. I don't like myself. Accepting the fact that if you lose three or four pounds, that's a huge accomplishment. You have to live in your own world. You cannot judge yourself. That's why social media and all these things are horrible. You can't judge yourself off of the so-called competition that we have made up in our mind. The things that, how people look, how people act, how smart someone is. This is a race that you run completely alone. A lot of folks talk so much shit about, hey, I'm gonna change your life. I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that. Are you accountable for what you're doing? Are you accountable? And I mean to the T for what you're saying. I am. And that's where it started. It started with that total, total accountability of let's not lie today. Let's tell people the truth about who you are. And when you can get on and tell someone like I'm doing right now exactly how f***ed up you are, that's the goal in life. To put your life on a billboard, on the busiest road, in the busiest highway in the world and say, this is how f***ed up I used to be. Take it or leave it.